Welcome to the Lone Star College Football Show. I'm your host, Chris Daly. Each episode, I will bring you news and information about college football in Texas, not just the FBS school, anyone who plays college football in the great state of Texas. I will do so by talking with the people making it happen on the gridiron, the head coaches, the staff, the players, but mostly the head coaches. Thank you for joining us. Looking to boost your company's marketing? Look no further than Fresh Media Works. Podcasting is the best way to promote your brand and increase your customer base. You can create your own show, be a guest on other podcasts, or advertise on existing podcasts to reach a valuable audience. Don't wait. Start elevating your marketing game today with Fresh Media Works. Call now. 713-269-4620 or find us online at freshmediaworks.com slash podcasting. This series consists of press conferences at the 2023 Texas High School Football Coaches Association Convention. This is Casey Keeler, the Sam Houston State University head coach. You know, this is the first time in the history of college football that you had transition, but you also had the transfer course. So, you know, talking to our players with guys who had eligibility, it was like, you know, I think the best thing for us is the red shirt team. Because that way you get a chance to get two years in Conference USA or one year in Conference USA or whatever it is. A number of guys didn't have retro years. You know, my All-American held back transfer to Kentucky, my All-American offensive guard and be an all-conference at Tulane. And, and I helped them get there. I mean, you know, our whole thing is if you graduate, you know, you fulfill your responsibility. I don't want you to leave. But in those situations, I understood. It was hard. I mean, when Appalachian State um, transitioned up to FBS, their players couldn't transfer across or up. They only could transfer down. In our situation, our kids could transfer anyway. Anyway, so I thought we sort of approached it in a unique way, and we took the lead redshirt 15 of our best players, and I think that's going to give us a lot more depth than a typical FCS program moving up to FBX. Uh, I like my roster. I've been told I have the 38th ranked schedule in America, so it's going to be you know, some interesting sledding, but uh, I do think we have a pretty good roster. Uh, but you guys have like five MVP games yep. in the middle of the season on Thursday, a few Wednesdays. How do you prepare for that? And is there anything different that you do way ahead of time to kind of get you ready for that stretch? Yeah, you know, the pandemic has made online classes, you know, very palatable and, and, and part of our norm now. And so I think you'll find us with a lot of our kids in a lot of online classes in the fall. Um, and it's typical in college these days. Um, and, you know, we're just going to get into a rhythm. And we have a lot of short weeks, and we play Houston on a Saturday night, and then we turn around and we play um, uh, Jacksonville State on a Thursday night. Uh, and then we go play Liberty on a Wednesday. Uh, fortunately, you know, we've done some research. I you know, have a couple guys in my, on, on my staff that are former NFL guys and have talked about playing on Sunday and playing on a Thursday and, and those kind of things. Uh, but to try to get a consistent schedule the best you can. Um, also, just in training camp, I know one of the big things for us is we think we have a good team, but I keep help. You know, we will we will send them a lot of contact. We're not a big tackle to the ground team anyway. You know, we're a team that's never in full pads during the season. I think that will help us. Um, we'll probably rely on a lot more walkthroughs than normal. Uh, but we have to be conscious. I mean, you know, what has changed over the last you know, 20 years or so in college football is the strength programs have gotten just so good. And everyone's bigger, stronger, faster. And those collisions are so much more violent. We're just really conscious trying to keep our kids healthy, and that's why we really uh, are very conscious in practice. Like in training camp, we'll go full pass maybe three times in training camp, maybe tackle to the ground twice in an effort to try to keep them healthy for, for the season. So I think those kind of things that we've already been doing will help us in those midweek games and those short week games. Uh, that uh, you have to you know, kind of you know, prepare for. How do you weigh the, the benefits versus the challenges? Because on one hand, obviously, you're going to get some exposure because it's, it's going to be in the yeah, seven, seven national television get televised games on linear TV, which right. is a big deal for us. When we won the national championship, we were on four times. You know, four straight time, four straight weekends in, in 
in the spring, which is great for the university. This is stepping now. Also, there's a payday for us, which there was no payday when we were in FCS football. Um, and if you look, I mean, James Madison made the move to FBS, we're making the move to FBS, and in North Dakota State and in South Dakota State, if the, if the Mountain West opens up, I know they'll make the move. I think, you know, we saw an opportunity, and we thought that, you know, this was the right opportunity for, for Sam Houston, especially with, I don't want to say that FCS football is being diluted, but when four of the best teams in the country, two, two former national champions last decade have just left, Two more talking about possibly leaving. I think it tells you a little bit about what's happening in our, in our, in our level of football. Coach, Dave with Western Sports Magazine. You went from winning the national championship at the FCS, and now you're going to see the new 12 team playoff system in Division I FBS. I mean, how do you see that in Conference USA now? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're playing seven bowl teams, you know, so, and six of them won. Um, and again, the 30th ranked schedule in America. So I'm telling our kids, like, like our mentality is so funny. You know, when we made this move and, and uh, they're talking to our players about, like, you know, what their goals are. Our kids aren't talking about going six and six. Our kids are talking about winning every game. Our kids are talking about going to beat be, be BYU. So that's the mentality. That's a culture we have. Um, I do think that eventually um, there's going to be some opportunities for those group of five schools, at least one, maybe two, to get in. I think that's how it has to be set up, or it's going to have to be set up where the big guys go and play with their own team football, and, and Group of Five has a national championship on the road. Because so, you, you, you've had that experience of going four playoff games in your at, in the FCS, and now you see that over here with those twelve teams. I mean, uh, well, it's exciting. I mean, you know, and I think the, the, you always wondered why it had happened earlier, because being a guy who spent twenty years in playoff football. It's like the greatest thing for your players. It's a great thing for, for I mean, it's just, it, it's your, you're playing those do or die games. And you're, you, you know, your players get excited about it, your university gets excited about it. I just didn't understand how Division One couldn't work that out. And now that they have worked it out to a, to a better level, I think eventually they get the 16 team or they're going to break off on their own. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than playoff football. There really is. My favorite is Texas football. Um, have you gotten any clarification from the NCAA in terms of bowl eligibility and how that would work? Yeah, so if, if we're bowl eligible and there is a team that's five and seven that would normally have made a bowl, we'll, we'll replace that team. So you'll be above the APR? Yes, yeah, so we'll be above the APR teams. Uh, and again, I, I don't agree with it. I mean, you know, why, I don't understand. It's not like we have different. Not that like we have 90 scholarships are coming down to 85. It, it, there, there's nothing that we have in our system or, or the, the level we've playing that's given us an advantage over FBS. So why can't you just let us go, you know, make a bowl if we earn a bowl? Um, and again, especially since we were put in a situation where you know, our players could transfer out. And, and so we went through one of the most unique things ever in college football where you know, you're making this transition and your players can leave. And no one wants to play for nothing. We all want to play for something. And so that was, you know, our way of, you know, mitigating, you know, the, the, what was going on was to redshirt our players. And it was hard. I mean, looking behind me and seeing 50 of the best players that I've ever coached standing behind me when you're trying to win a ball game, that was not a lot of fun. And I didn't realize how difficult it was going to be until we went through it. Because we're a program that we're, we're all in, we're all in all the time. It's always about winning. You know, it's always about challenging ourselves to see if we win a championship. And so to, you know, have the, hey, we're playing for the standard, it's a great line, but it was really difficult to do. And then, well, you talk about, you know, always coaching towards playoffs and stuff like that. Does that change your coaching philosophy and how you have to go through a weekly season where it's not, you know, just get in and then figure it out later, but, you know, each, each week you're trying to get into a, to a Yeah, I'm a game-by-game a -game sort of guy. Um, like, when you look at our player manual, You'll see the schedule, and when you open this and you look at the schedule, you're going to see BYU. And there's going to be nothing else on the schedule. And so the freshman, the coach forget to like print the rest of the schedule. Like, no, we're playing BYU. I don't know who's next. I don't care who's next. We're playing BYU. So we get this one game mentality that I start very early with them. I start during training camp, and uh, so I, I don't see that change. It's going to be a, it's a one game season. I always tell them, guys, I'm on a one game contract. You know, it's a one game season. That's how we look at it. 
uh, Chris Hunter, 24 7 Sports. I, sorry, this is a bit of a philosophical question, but you've been at three different places for a long time and had time to develop and recruit at every one of those places. I'm curious in this era of college football with all of the other outside factors that go into recruiting and developing college football, how have you had to change your approach and can you do it even close to the same way that was possible even six years ago? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, you have to adapt and you have to change, but I'm about culture, culture, and culture. You know, we, we believe that um, uh, we're built on love and trust. And you can't love somebody unless you know somebody. You can't trust somebody unless you know somebody. So we spend a lot of time in our culture getting a chance to know each other. You know, if there's a birthday, we're all wishing each other a happy birthday. You know, we do stuff where, let's take an example. We have a book, Make Your Bet. It's about Navy SEAL and the 10 things you learn uh, as a Navy SEAL. So I'll have an offensive coach and defensive coach and they will teach a chapter to a group of 14 random players. Kicker, quarterback, we tackle, safety. Um, and after that chapter, then they'll teach the second chapter to a second group. Well, the point is, when that 10 chapters are done, every single player has interacted with every single coach. And so, community service, same thing. We do a lot of things where we interact with each other. So when we're on the plane, or we're in the hotel, or we're on the sideline, we're in this thing together. I mean, you know, we're down 21 points versus James Madison, and we want this culture. I mean, they're a really good football team. Our team never panicked in that locker room. And again, I think culture is something that we all want talent for players, but we've always put a premium on culture. So again, I think uh, we're all about culture. I think culture is uh, the way we can, you know, succeed forward, and that's kind of always from my program. Yes. Is culture in that way still possible when the roster has the ability to turn over um, the way it can in this era? Well, I give you another, you know, and again, this is my circumstance. I'm not, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, I, I'm not, you know, put for, we don't cut players. We don't cut players. So now, if you don't go to class, then I'm going to cut you. If you're doing something wrong in the, in the town, then, then you have a chance to cut. But if you're not a good enough football player, I'm going to graduate you. That's how you develop trust in a culture. They know that we're in this thing together. They know that I care about that. This is just not a business. If you run this just like a business, that's what you're going to get. So, again, I think my success has really been about uh, finding great players. I've had a lot of them. Getting great coaches. You know, Dan Lanning, despite being defensive back coach nine years ago at Sam Houston. And then uh, Patrick Tony, who's now who was the team coordinator of Florida, now we followed him. So I'm Kyle Flood, who used to be my line coach. So I've been really blessed to have some great coaches. So you need great players, need great coaches, but again, I think also the culture you develop, and part of that is things like not cutting players. You know, um, it makes us different. And I think, you know, if you look at us, we were not a team that was overly funded as an FCS program. It wasn't like, oh, look at all the riches that Sam Houston had. And we won a national championship. We realized that there was a lot of work to do in front of us to get up to the FPS level in terms of you know, facilities and different and personnel and, and, and uh, support staff and those things. But I have an amazing location and I have a, a great culture and I got kids who, who you know believe that they're going to do the same together. So I think they always have a chance when they have that. Uh, when you've been talking to alumni, when you're talking about uh, recruits. What have you felt the perception of San Houston maybe change as you've transitioned into that game? From 2010 to 2021, only Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Clemson, and North Dakota State won for more football games in San Houston. Okay, think about that a second. In a 10 year period, only had there's only five schools above us in the wins. So, you know, obviously we've done something. It's a special place. We've been a rarefied area. We've won a national championship and I've uh, been in the Final Four with seven times or whatever it's been. Um, so when you talk to players, you say, okay, now we're just going to translate this up to FBS. And, you know, there are so many times that we would compete against some of those G5 schools that were just outside the state of Texas. We don't, we're not losing those battles now. We're winning those battles. And primarily because kids don't play FBS football. And we get that. And so we also recruited really well as an FCS school, we're recruiting even better now than an FBS school. In 2021, when we won the national championship, we had the greatest season in history of college football, 21 wins in a 10-month period, and a national championship, and three conference championships. 
71% of our team were high school players that we got out of the state of Texas. 71%. So we're not a big transfer portal team. We're not big junior college teams. Do we take junior college kids? Absolutely. Love, love those Texas junior college kids. There are a couple of kids from Northern California. Portal kids, we'll take them. But our foundation is right here in high school players in the state of Texas. And so, yeah, they've been, they've been excited. The, the response has been really well. And we've gone over very well in terms of our recruiting and the excitement to come and play at the S football center. Right, you mentioned uh, the personnel part. When you look and you've seen, I like, see Jamie, you've had some immediate success last year. You've seen other programs that have made more about the been successful. When you look at your roster, how far along are you in terms of having what you need to succeed at a consistent level when you move to the game? Red shirting those 15 players was huge for us. You, know, you get Trevor Williams back, it's going to be a four time or five time captain, I forget. You know, get Markel Perry back. Markel Perry had four tackles for a loss against Texas A&M. That's better to feel that day. I mean, so we got a lot of guys back. You know, Noah Smith, that he made a day, he won the two part of the national championship touchdown. There's so many guys coming back that have national championship experience that wouldn't be back if you win the red shirt. So, I, I, you know, I think our roster is pretty good. I said the schedule is brutal, but our roster is pretty good. And, you know, I'm excited to, to go to war with my men. Joseph and Mark, you used to probably speak on the schedule. If I could go back to the ATC game, uh, obviously you have a huge alumni base in this area, but any insight into how that game came about or, or what the big benefits are of, of coming in this oh, area place? Yeah, I can't quote the number right now, the number of alums we have in the San Houston area, but it's pretty big. And, and I can't walk into high school without, you know, someone running down the hall to you know, tell me about their Sam experience. So it only made sense for us to you know, do games at NRG Stadium, and if we get a game with the University of Houston, or Rice, you know, we're going to be playing Rice in the future, those games make a lot of sense. So uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it was one of those, our brand is, you know, it's almost like we always play a second homecoming game down in Houston. Um, and so it makes a lot of sense that we're trying to do a good chance to do All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, Coach. And once again, I want to thank Junior Smokehouse for being the title sponsor of the Lone Star College Football Show. I look forward to telling you more about them each and every episode. Hey, if you want coverage of your school or just want to give a shout out to your team, leave us a voicemail at 713-568-6361 and we'll play it out on the show. That number again is 713 568 Six three six one. Also, do us a favor and give us a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. We will also read out the best reviews on the air. Until next time, I'm Chris Daly reminding you to get out there and enjoy some football.